Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out at the range to do a quick test to find out what there are difference wise between the one and 12 twist of early AR-15 M16 barrels versus the current most popular twist rate, which is one in seven. But what do those twist rates mean? So if you're not familiar with twist rates, let's break it down for you really quick. So a one in 12 twist rate means that the bullet is going to travel, it's gonna rotate once in 12 inches. On the one and seven, it's gonna rotate once in seven inches of barrel length that's traveled. So the one and seven spins the bullet faster, the one and 12 spins it more slowly. And so when it comes to bullet weights, that can make a difference. So the one in 12 twist rate was designed for lighter weight bullets, 55 grains and even lighter, like 40 grain bullets. And that's because the twist rate, the one in 14s and the one in 12s, one in 14 being very early, came from the 222 Remington cartridge, which was a varmining cartridge. The 222 got modified into the 223 and the 556. And so then the twist rates started to change as the military started to use heavier and heavier bullets, not just heavier bullet weights, but also they had longer, heavier bullets that were used for tracers and they wanted to be able to stabilize everything. So that's why we've kept increasing the twist rate and spinning the bullets faster. So what happens when you shoot a 62 grain, kind of a modern bullet weight out of a one in 12? What happens when you shoot a 55 grain out of a one in 12? And then conversely, what does it do out of a one in seven? And that's what we wanna find out today. How big is the accuracy difference, if at all, between the two twist rates with the two different bullet weights? For today's test, we have a cardboard target down range and we have two colors for each rifle. And that means each rifle is gonna shoot two groups, one with a 62 grain bullet, one with a 55 grain bullet. And we'll mark those groups with the different colors of ink so then we can have a discussion afterwards about the accuracy of the two rifles. This should be a lot of fun because I'm really curious about this. I've had a lot of people ask me, well, what is the accuracy difference between the two twist straights? And today we're going to find out. A lot of folks ask me, how can I get involved in the firearms business in that particular community? And one of the best ways to do that is to become a gunsmith. Every gunsmith I know is just overbooked with work. It's a very good living. And so if you would like to become a gunsmith, you need to go to a gunsmithing school or become an apprentice for an existing gunsmith. But Modern Gun School is an accredited college that also works with veterans in the GI Bill, where you can go and get a degree from accredited college in gunsmithing and then go out and start your own gunsmithing business which I think is a really great option. Again, throughout my entire life, gunsmiths have always been able to earn a really good living, assuming they have a really strong work ethic. So please check out Modern Gun School. I do have a link in the video description below. All right, guys, I'm actually really looking forward to finding out how all these rifles perform with the different bullet weights. We have the H&R M16A1 clone up first. We have some 55 grain Federal. I do want to thank our friends over at Federal for supplying the ammunition free of charge to the channel. I have been shooting this stuff since I was a kid growing up in the 80s. Absolutely love Federal ammunition. Uh, when we're doing our BCM test and we've done like over 8,000 rounds, fired through the gun without cleaning or oiling it. And all that ammunition has been Federal and in over 8,000 rounds, we've not had a single failure. So love myself some Federal ammo. So 55 grain, five rounds up first have a cardboard target down range. Uh, we're having a problem. If you take a look at the windows, they're all uh, fogged over. We have some really, really nasty humidity right now. We have the heater running in here. So uh, the spotting scope is just clouding up. We can't show you in real time the groups appearing on the paper, but after I fire each group, we'll walk down range and we'll mark off the groups. Okay, so we can see the groups right after I fire them. So first up, we have the A1, 55 grains. We are shooting iron sights. And let's see what we get out of the old A1 with the 1 and 7 twist. All right. Run down range and see what we got. Take our green sharpie. All right, so here's my five shot group. This shot, I was actually doing a bottom hold and it hit here. And then for the other four, for whatever reason, I was doing what I normally do is cut the circle in half and the rest of the group landed up here. So let's go ahead and mark this off. Again, this is the 55 green stuff. And then we'll have to mark that one in a creative way so we can tell it's green. All right, 55 grain done. Let's throw some 62 grain ammunition in there and see what it does. All right, guys, so next up we got some 62 grain American Eagle ball. And I will say this is not the most accurate ammo in the world. This is just straight up ball ammo. So three to four inch groups of iron sights is not unexpected. 
And we are shooting 100 yards. Thing's got a really light trigger on it. A couple of those went off just a little before I was ready for them to. All right, five shots. Let's grab the red Sharpie. Use green. Let's run down range and see what she did. All right, so this is the A1 with the 62 grain stuff, 100 yards. Got my red Sharpie. We got one here, one here, one here, one there. And then we have one there so pretty much the same between both including the flyers they're even grouping in pretty much the same area so all right now let's grab the 604 with the 1 and 12 twist and repeat the test with the 55 and 62 green projectiles all right guys now we have the 604 this is the h and r and it has the 1 and 12 twist barrel first up is the 55 grain stuff which it should like Go ahead and load her up, throw my ears on, don't want to forget those. And we're going to be shooting at the same target, five rounds. Let's see, blue, let's go see what we got. So this is pretty interesting, folks. The one in 12 twist, 55 grain bullets out of the 604 H&R. Here's my five shot group. You have four shots and like almost an inch. And of course you have the one flyer, which I always gotta throw one of those in there. That's pretty darn impressive. I think I need to zero my M16A1 a little better. All right, so see if I can get this blue to stick. All right, one more group. Let's see what the 62 grain stuff does. This is what I'm really curious to find out about. I will say, folks, one of the cruelties of life is getting old. My front sight on my rifles these days, last few years, pretty darn out of focus. It sucks. Used to be nice and sharp, not so much anymore. All right, 62 grain Federal up next, five rounds. 604, one in 12 twists, 100 yards. Let's see what we get here. I don't need to mark this one. Take the Sharpie anyway. Let's go take a look. All right, guys, the one in seven, I'm sorry, the one in 12 twist with the 62 grain stuff, not quite as accurate, <laughs> not even close to the 55 grain stuff. So if you remember, here's my 55 grain group, four of those shots pretty much into an inch. Here is my 62 grain stuff out of, got this one, this one, and this one, that's quite the spread. Pretty much doubled the group size. So, it stands to reason the one in 12 definitely prefers the lighter bullets, does not appear to properly stabilize the 62 grains offering, you know, very good accuracy. Marginal at best, still workable, still quite usable, but not the best accuracy. All right, 55 grain ammunition out of the 1 and 12 twist 604. Five shots for velocity. Three thousand two feet per second. Twenty nine forty.
2936. Twenty nine oh three. That's quite the spread. Twenty nine sixty nine. So I mean, we've seen up to almost a hundred foot per second variation, uh, which will affect accuracy and everything else. So uh, that's with the one in twelve fifty five grain. All right. All right, guys. Now we got some fifty five grain Federal, the H and R M sixteen A one clone with the one in seven twist. Let's fire five shots and get an average of velocity. Twenty nine seventeen. Twenty eight eighty seven. Twenty nine nineteen. Twenty nine forty seven, twenty nine hundred. Gonna have to run the math on that one, but it seems like the one in seven might be a little bit slower with the same ammunition. All right, guys. So our testing is complete. Here's the groups and the the outcome. All right. So with the A one, and the A one has the one in seven twist. With the sixty two grain projectiles, we got a group with the flyer of 5.6 inches. If we take the flyer out, the group, the four shot group becomes 3.4 inches. With the A1, one and seven twist, 55 grain, again, 5.6 inches, very consistent, but we take that one flyer out and it becomes 3.3 inches. So very consistent performance between the two bullet weights out of the M16A1 with its one and seven twist. Move over to the H&R one and 12 twist of the 604. And we got that really good group with the 55 grain ammo that was 2.9 inches. So the flyer, and then right here, like I said, right about an inch. And then we had the, the one that opened it up. And then with the 62 grain out of the one and 12 twist 604, 7.9 inches center to center. So a significant increase <laughs> from 55 grain, just under three inches, to almost eight inches with the 62 grain. So it's safe to say that the 62 grain or the heavier bullets out of a one in 12 twist is not gonna give you optimal performance. So if you're looking at picking up one of these clones and you wanna shoot a variety of ammunition, go with the one in seven twist. Uh, if you want clone correct and you're just gonna shoot 55 grain ammo, the one in 12 will be the way to go. I think that's good information to have. One other thing that we did just out of curiosity, both these rifles have 20 inch barrels and so I wanted to see, was there a significant velocity difference between the one and seven and the one and 12 twist barrels using the 55 grain ammunition? So we used our zero uh, Garmin, these brand new little chronographs, guys, these things are amazing. This is probably one of the most useful tools I've picked up in recent times. Uh, a great, great tool for the shooter, reloader, everybody. So we got the, the data. And so with the H&R M16A1 with the one and seven twist 55 grain bullets, we had a five shot average of 2,914.4 feet per second. We move over to the H&R 604 with the one and 12 55 grain, and we get a five shot average velocity of 2,950.3 feet per second. Now, this is within standard deviation potentially, uh, again, not rock solid evidence, but it would appear, I and mean, maybe if we fired 100 rounds out of each and got a better average, but it would appear with our five shot uh, strings that the one in seven is giving a slightly slower muzzle velocity. But again, it falls within the standard deviation, so you can't really take too much from it because after all, we're talking about on average 36 feet per second, but it was consistent, consistently a bit slower. Interesting information. The whole reason we did this video today, folks, is because I know many of you are looking to buy one of these clones. I've seen many questions. Well, what barrel twist weight should I get? Should I get the 1 in 12? Should I get the 1 in 7? Why? Well, I think this video will answer those questions for you. You know what ammunition you're going to prefer to shoot. So, hope, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. You found the information useful. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that so we can continue doing videos like this is to become part of our Patreon family. There's a link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, you got the join and thanks button underneath the video player you're watching right now. 
mash either one of those buttons and you can help support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. Last but not least, please swing by, check out Copper Custom. Thank you for 16 years of support, folks. We'll talk to you guys soon.